get this out of the way. Perfect. Okay. Uh, before we get to this evening's agenda, um, just like to make one announcement that due to recent resignation, we are seeking a seventh member for the Zoning Board of Appeals. If anyone viewing this broadcast or in the audience would be interested in applying, you may file an application at the town clerk's office. The application is available online at www.reddingma.gov. Click the bottom right on the home page where it says boards and committees and you'll find the application. Thank you. All right. Very good. So we will begin with case number 1110, which is Zoning Board of Appeals. We'll hold the public hearing, okay? On the petition of Eric, and I apologize, I, I mispronounced your name. Collodian means? Kalianidis, my apologies. <laughs> Who seeks a special permit under section 6.3.8 of the zoning bylaw bylaws in order to demolish an existing dwelling located on a non-conforming lot and to construct a new single family dwelling on the property located at 105 Sanborn Lane in Reading, Mass. Um, if there's no objection, I will dispense with the reading of the abutters list except to say that the abutters were notified as were the following, the Board of Selectmen, the Town Clerk, the Police Department, the Fire Department, the Building Department, Assessor's Office, Engineering Division, CPDC, Conservation Commission, Health Department, members and associate members of the Board of Appeals, and the Planning Boards of Wakefield, Linfield, North Reading, Stoneham, Woburn, and Wilmington. All right, now, um, is there anyone who thinks they may like to speak on this particular matter, I'd ask you to please stand up at this time to be sworn in. No one's presenting. No one's tonight? presenting. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I'll just stand up. <laughs> yeah, even if you don't end up saying something, it's always good to just get sworn in anyway. So, uh, do you swear the testimony you're going to give is the truth? The answer is I do. I do. I do. Thank you. And uh, the floor is yours. My name is uh, Leonard Connaughton. I'm basically the construction manager for Eric. Um, I actually filed a petition in the application. Uh, he's looking for relief um, for a frontage issue. He currently has a little over 114 feet. He needs 120, I believe. Uh, we do meet a lot of requirements for square footage, and we do conform to all the front side and rear setbacks. Okay. The proposal is to build a 3,000 square foot colonial home, uh, which would be three bedrooms, two and a half beds. Uh, should we start with questions or Glenn do you have I guess we'll start with you Glenn do you have any anything you'd like to add or comment it's a well, it's a, it's a typical um, 63A proposal to tear down an existing dwelling and to construct a new. Um, the lot is large enough with area, but it lacks the required frontage. Um, I don't. I don't think I see any construction plans. Any construction plans in the front? Uh, let me see if I have any. Um, yeah, sure. I have that on there as well. I do have construction plans with me. I didn't realize they were supposed to be part of the application. Not just the plot one. Yeah, I, I don't think there's a necessary, you know, it's not a requirement. Okay. It's always nice to be able to look at them. It gives us an idea of how the new construction is going to uh, be able to fit in with the uh, neighborhood. So uh, okay. it's always well, a good I, idea. I do have a set. I didn't yeah. realize that. I think yeah, we would have done that. Yeah, I know John would like to take a look. I would sure. at some point. Yeah. Okay. We will. So we can is that is other than no. maybe, 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 maybe you want to run through them a little bit. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, it's basically going to be, as I said, a. Uh, 
3,000 square foot colonial with a free tie garage up the side. Um, as you can see from the plot plan, the new driveway will enter from the side and the garage itself does side load. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the uh, elevations are basically a um, very traditional New England colonial. We're going to do a clapboard siding, an architectural roof shingle. The neighborhood itself is one that is in transition, certainly at this end of Sanborn Lane. So, uh, you know, we think it's an improvement. Yeah. Um, there is a small deck on the back, which you can see right here. Mr. Kelly, that is, has decided not to do that screened in porch at this time. Oh, okay. So that won't be included. Yep. Uh, it does conform, though, from a zoning standpoint, if, if you want to do it in the, in the future. That's basically it. There is no third floor finished. Just okay. Strictly two stories with a roll over the garage. Thank you. Sure. Glenn? Oh, I, I haven't seen any plans. So <laughs> just what we just saw right, right. now, yeah. Right. But we typically we require the plot plan, but not right. right. No, the, the application states, and I'm sure that I mentioned it, that yeah. you need plans are necessary to clarify your request. That's that's in the ZBA application. Okay. No. Mm. Okay. Are we willing to accept plans this evening? Do you have yeah. other sets of plans? Uh, I, I I can. Drop them off tomorrow. I didn't realize it. It didn't say it in the application. I, it, it, I'm sorry. It does say that in the application, and I know I mentioned that to you. Uh, on the zoning application, I, I don't think it was a requirement, but I, I certainly would have Application number 17 details step-by-step step on what you have to do, and one of the requirements is to supply plans necessary to clarify your request to the board. Okay, I misunderstood. And I, and I usually suggest bringing photos of the existing dwelling so you could show the existing dwelling and the proposed so the board could make up their mind. I didn't, uh, I misunderstood that, that's my All fault. Right. Well, that, that, well, that's fine, but, but that's, mm -hmm. that's standard procedure. Okay. <clears throat> my understanding was, and I'm sorry, but my understanding was that um, we received a letter from Glenn saying that we didn't conform from the frontage. We filed the application for the special permit, and then we filed for the building permit once that was approved. So it's my, my misunderstanding. Okay. That's all right. No, you do. You do file for the building permit once it's approved, but okay. the board has a difficult time approving something if they can't view the plans. John, did you have a comment? Yes, I, I have one question. Um, you have other sets of plans back at the office, I assume, right? Uh, I do, I do, yes. Because we would like a set of, we would like that set of plans for the records this evening so that Glenn can refer back to them. Happy to do that. So can you do that? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, by all means. Okay. Why, don't you, why don't you give that to the chairman? Yep. Yep. Those plans match the footprint yeah. of the plot plan. Well, that's what you're going to find out. Well, well that's the board should find out tonight. That's tonight. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, actually, the survey did it off that set of plans, so they okay. should. Well, this is actually the, what we're going to refer to in, in terms of the decision. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the layout of the house, the layout of the house is going to be. How can the basic footprint? Yeah. But th this is right. the, that's going to be. This is what we're going to go off plot plan on control. Whatever. You think this is this is? I don't know. I haven't looked at. Them. Okay. I haven't seen them. I why don't know. If, I don't know if that. I don't know if that matches this plot plan. Why don't you look at this as we go through okay. the rest of the questions we have? Side questions. Uh, I don't even have a hard for a question. Uh, the thing that came to my attention though is that there's the abutter letter we got, which had a concern about. The fact that we were putting a three-car garage and a, and the, the driveway was running along the left side of face left side of yeah. the uh, yeah. facing the Yep. And they had a concern, or they were expressing a concern about what that impact might be, if any, on their septic system and their well water. Would you care to comment on that? It'll be a standard. Uh, gravel-based driveway with an inch and a half of binder and an inch and a half of blacktop. So, I mean, it certainly won't be disruptive with respect to a well or septic system. One other comment they made, too, was that on this drawing, which I think they were referring to, it shows that the existing well on your property is in the back of the house? And, they yeah, said it was, and their, their comment was it's in the front of the house. 
I'm sorry, I mean the comment was that the well was in the but front. The well was in the front of the house. No, was it in the front or the back? The well's in the back of the house. We don't have any intent to reuse the well. We're going to go with town water. So he may decide to use the okay. well for irrigation. For irrigation, yeah. Purposes, so. But not, not for, yeah. not for you know, domestic water. No, we'll, we'll do new water. Mm -hmm. But at 105, Sam, when the, the well is in the back there. Are there any water issues on that property as it exists today? Uh, not that we're aware of. Either on that property or the abutting properties? I couldn't speak to the abutting properties. I'm talking about runoff from this one. Uh, I would think not, no. It's quite a large piece of property. I don't think there's any issues with groundwater. I don't have any more questions, please. John? <coughs> we probably need to read into the uh, records the letter that we just received from the Hulses. I figured we'd do that for public comment. Of it? That, okay. Yeah, usually that's yeah. what we do. I okay. think read it into the records that they uh, okay. the public. Um, the only question I have for the applicant is you have 17 foot setback on the proposed dwelling on the um, easterly side, but only a four foot uh, setback from the edge of the driveway <coughs> on the westerly side. And we know that the setback requirements are 15 feet. I'm wondering if we can move the, uh, the whole thing over one foot to make it 16 on the westerly, the easterly side and make it an even five feet on the westerly side. Absolutely. Sure. Where, where's this? Four, oh, okay. Four feet here. I see. Right. Yeah. From the edge of driveway to the property right. line. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and it probably we would. Yet. Okay. <laughs> and probably would be in your best interest to um, change the grading. Um, on your driveway, the proposed driveway, so that it does not go into the um, adjacent owner's property. Oh, we're, because we're that's doing, yeah, we make sure that. Yeah. But I mean that I don't think we have we don't have that authority. Yeah, authority or, or purview. I don't think so. Yeah. Um, but I mean that would be a problem, possibly for you down the road if 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 perchance you didn't and you were impacting their well because they may have a well in the front of the house. We don't know that. It doesn't tell us where their wells are. We don't yeah, even know we'll, if they have a well. We'll certainly be sensitive to create okay. by all means. That's the only questions I have. Bob? Uh, yeah, I, I think I mirrored and heard some of the uh, concerns already that I had. Uh, yeah, looking at it, and I just wrote some notes here. Legal non conforming lot uh, because of the less than required frontage there. I think it uh, mirrors probably, it looks like the two abutting lots are very, very similar. To it, and I think probably a lot of the lots up uh, off of that upper end of Sanborn Lane. Uh, it appears all the setback requirements uh, have been met here, uh, as shown on the plan. Uh, so I didn't have any issues with that. No new conformities, new non-conformities mm -hmm. with the lot, uh, and the proposed dwelling uh, based on the plans we see tonight, uh, as they say, standard uh, New England Colonial. Uh, looks like it would fit fit okay with the uh, neighborhood with as far as I'm concerned uh, that was a comment like like John had brought up uh, usually we do get some type of architectural elevations or that's and fine. that's fine I apologize. Yeah, that's all right and uh, this is an aquifer protection zone uh, it is noted on the plan it's quite a large lot so I think they're lucky with mm -hmm. that but it right. is noted that the uh, uh, proposed lot coverage and I think what they intend when they say lot coverage is also the driveway, the right. shed, concrete walk. So it's basically impervious area is 12 and a half percent. So it's less than the 15 percent right. uh, required for the uh, aquifer protection zone. Uh, so I don't have a, a, an issue with uh, that. I know based on the letter that we got from the abutters, and there's a copy here, if you, uh, you probably didn't get it. We didn't. So there's an extra one there if you would like it. Thank you. Uh, but they did have concerns because they do have a septic system there. And when I say this would be the uh, water, uh, 107, I think it is. Yeah, Sam Borland. And they have concerns because they do have a well, they say, uh, for their water supply, plus they have a septic system and they're concerned about runoff. It didn't appear to me, looking at the plan, that there was going to be, I would 
say measurable amount of uh, excess runoff the driveway is there now mm -hmm. where the existing you know with the existing driveways where the proposed one is uh, there might be a bit more pavement uh, if you added it up but uh, the pavement would be towards the back of the house yeah and I don't know where they're well or whatever may have right. impacted, but I don't know either. It just said it was 30 feet off the property right. line. Yeah. Period. Uh, is it a well? It's a well for domestic water. I believe that's, that's that what it was that, that appears to letter. be, but we don't have anything. That's what the letter kind of states. It says our septic tank and dry well are located in the rear of the house. So yeah, the well is in the front from the front. Well, 30 so well, 30 30 <laughs> yeah. So we don't. Our concern is for water trespass onto our property where our well is located. I take it that's the domestic yeah. water well. Yeah. I was a bit surprised. I didn't know we had too many of those in town. I think so. More, I than, more than likely, our driveway would be the lower of the elevation than their, yeah. than their property. But uh, it, it, like you say, John, too, I think, I don't know if that falls under our realm of... I don't uh, think so. I think that's conservation. <laughs> so... I think but it's there, conservation, the, and I think if something happened down the road, it's the maybe York, open yourself right. up to a civil action yeah. or something. Uh, we'll certainly address it to this. I mean, we'll certainly go see him, knock on the door, and explain it to him. Wouldn't hurt. By all means. Mm -hmm. But uh, okay, those are my comments, and uh, other than that, uh, I don't have any issues with with this. It seems pretty clear. Okay, John. Um, the only question I had: You're not living there now, are you? No. Is anybody living there now? No. Do you know how long it's been vacant? Yeah. Uh, uh, probably ten months. Ten months. I Made mean, it yeah. out, but yeah. Okay, I mean, that that was my question. And when I when we got the letter from the neighbor, mm -hmm. I didn't know if there was an existing problem, which is why they were trying to address it. That existed there now. If you've noticed, the garage is under now. It's underneath. Yeah, us. so yes. it's much lower. Okay. The garage is underneath us, so there wouldn't right. be an issue. I think that's why they raised that concern because we are outside. Now the garage is going to be at the right, surface. Right. Right. Yeah. But we can certainly control the flow of water when we grade yeah. the driveway, and we'll be sensitive to any issues. Certainly. That was, that was the only question. I had. Okay. Before we get to public comment, I'd just like to return to Glenn now that you've had a chance to look at the yeah no the, plans. The, the footprint of the basic house matches the plot plan, with the exception of the screened-in porch and the connection yeah. between that. Okay. That's not shown on this on this okay. plot plan. Um, the existing shed appears to be right on the property line. Which is a, <coughs> a violation of the zoning. Eight feet, yeah. five foot, five feet. It should, it should be it should be five feet. But I assume that that um, is not a uh, built into the ground. I th is that I couldn't see it from the street and I didn't walk in. I, I don't know. I, is that shed back there the on movable? Oh. Oh, the, oh, okay. You maintaining that though? No, I think it's going to go right. Oh, yeah, it's, it's gone. gone. It's gone. It's, it's gone. gone. Okay. It's got three kind of garage plenty of room. Yeah. Is the shed there now? The shed, the, the existing shed was there, correct. So we haven't made, we haven't touched it. It is there. Okay. Yeah, the, the plot plan says it's an existing shed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we'll get rid of it. They say they, they're going to uh, Remove demolish it. Up, yeah, I guess that's yeah. up to the board to decide that, I guess. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I don't, I don't have any issues with it. It meets, the proposal meets all the requirements of the zoning. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. Um, there was no height. Uh, there's no height indicated on the plans for the height of the building. I assume it's going to be under the 35 feet. Usually, the board looks at the elevation drawings yeah. with the dimension on it. Right. I, I would assume it is. What is it? Two stories in a stories uh, pitched in a, roof. Yeah, so. we'll be well under. I'm surprised it's 28 feet. I'll say. Well, if you came in over. Yeah, we'll probably probably we'll put it that way. <laughs> we certainly this will, this will be something that the uh, building inspector will be looking at. I think when you come in for your building permit, the height. And okay. obviously, I think that would be discussed at that point. Then, if we're, we're in excess of, uh, yeah, well, we can have access to a uh, yeah. dimension section for you, plan. Absolutely. All right. No problem. Okay. So at this time, I'm going to open up the um, public comment portion of the meeting. Is there anyone here who would like to comment? All right, sir. If you just stand up, I'll swear you in first, and then I'll have you identify yourself. So, uh, and this is Cindy so Greenwood, and we're on the bottom. One, two, six. Okay, Mr. Greenwood, can I can I swear you in? One moment. Uh, the testimony that you're about to give is the whole truth. The answer is I do. Thank you. It's just a question. What? 
Your address? 106. 106. Okay. Right across. Thank you. Okay. Just a question. Uh, I'd like to see what the garage is going to be. Can't see the plan. Uh, showing the architectural renderings. This is it here. I can show on the prop plot plan too, but that's. Yep. So as you face the property, you're across the street. You get to the driveway. Yeah, the driveway will be right up here, and then it'll side log through that right. Is it the property line that's existing? That's correct. Yeah. Is this the existing in the driveway? Uh, it'll be a new driveway. Yeah, but is it, is it the location? Or? Uh, the existing, existing driveway. Is it is. Now? Nope, the yeah. existing driveway is right here. This is the new control calls, new driveway. It's on the left side. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see because it's super cold up here. Yeah. And the garage will be here? The garage will be on the back, yeah. So you'll drive up and that's how you enter the garage right here. Yes. I'm concerned because this is a very narrow street, so as you use a private road. Right. It cannot be uh, wide enough, is it? Is it? It may cause a problem with us getting out of here. This one, yeah, I want to make sure that it doesn't happen. That's well, uh, Mr. on Mr. Kelly, that is his property. He'll be able to back out of his garage and drive out. So, no, he has, obviously, he's plenty of room, so he wouldn't park a vehicle on the street. Yeah, we, we know that. Yeah. It's just, I would drive it right here. Okay. And this is the new driveway. Right. As it is now, that we need to be moving it for the west. Correct? Yes, that's correct. Yep. That might be a problem. That's what, that's my concern. For, for you backing out or? Uh-huh. For us going in and out. It's very narrow. That's very, very narrow. Mm -hmm. okay. You need to go there and check it out. Yeah, yeah, I don't. Uh, that's extremely I mean, we're only going to pave the driveway up to the lot line, obviously, would have no effect on the on Sanborn land. No, I, I understand. Right. Yeah, we'll certainly go look. Yeah, yes, that is because we, that's, once you do it, it's going to create sure a problem. We want to make sure that it's not a problem. Okay. Because we've had in the past, we went to have it in the previous uh, we had construction. Okay. All kind of promises were made. We didn't know. We had a lot of problems. We don't want to repeat this problem. Because that's a private road, as you know. Right. And the property then goes to the center of the street. Okay. And, and as you probably know as well, I hope you do. You probably know mm -hmm. that. We just want to make sure, because as the driveway is now, it's, it's no problem. I don't know how many feet west you move in that driveway. I think it's staying in the same location, so sir. He said it's moving, I don't the entrance no, looks like it's, it, it's the same. It's the same location on the property. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it, the start of it is very close to the same yeah. location. It is. It's, 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 it's in it's the same within, location. Uh, and then once it gets on his lot, it, 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 it has a little less. less curve to it. Yeah. For yeah. most parts. But the entrance is in the same location. Yeah. I mean, if you don't mind, just let us know. If it really is pretty house. close. <coughs> to yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Greenwood. Would you? Uh, my name is. I, think she's uh, good, good I need to. Okay. Yes, you do. Uh, so, you swear the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth? The answer is I do. Yes. And my name is Anne Greenwood, 106 Sanborn Lane. I guess my question is, I feel like there's a lot of fast talking here. And where we live, as my husband said, it's very narrow. And I just want to get it mapped out. We know where the driveway is now. And I think you said it's going to be moved to the west. I just want to, I just want to know and have it documented. Is it going to the west? How many the entrance is going to the west, just so we get it clarified. Uh, I don't think it's going to the west. Mr. Greenwood, yeah. if you come up here okay. a second. This is the uh, existing driveway. It goes from here to here. Right. This is the new driveway from here to here. Okay. So the entrance is probably less than six inches further to the west oh. than it is oh. right now. Six it inches. Is. I'm, I'm guessing, I don't have a scale, but the, the proposed driveway actually falls wholly within, within the, the existing driveway. Okay. So the existing it hasn't driveway changed. Is the entrance to the driveway is not yeah. going to the west. No, no. no. once, once it's on the, the property, the driveway okay. expands. Okay. Well, that's, that's a good point. The existing yeah. driveway is yeah. wider than the proposed. Yeah. And I just, I just right. 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 The existing right. driveway the existing comes driveway in here, looks like it's two cars but wide allows the you to park two cars. The driveway now is going to go down the back. And this is where all this has, is being transferred to, being transferred to the back of the house. Mm -hmm. So the, the entrance, entrance has not the changed. Is exactly where it is. Yep. Right. It's not yep. okay. you find that? Okay. Is there any further, anyone else like to comment? 
Uh, okay, so at this time I will read into the record the letter from Harold and Gloria Hughes, um, to whom it may concern. We live at 107 Sanborn Lane and will not be able to attend the public hearing concerning 105 Sanborn Lane. The proposed plan shows the driveway, driveway adjacent to our lot line. Our concern is for water trespass onto our property where our well is located. The well is about 30 feet from the lot line. It is our only source of potable water and we are concerned about the use of ice melt so close to the well. Our septic tank and dry well are located in the rear of the house, also near the lot line. Our concern is for water runoff being directed to both of these. We are trying to avoid any possible future problems. We would appreciate the board addressing our concerns. For informational purposes, the plan shows the well to be in the rear of the existing house, but is actually in the front of the house. It is a working well. Thank you, signed Harold and Gloria Hills. And one more comment on that? Mr. Warren again? No, no, no. Okay. Uh, regarding the soil, that's a good point. I forgot to bring this up. That poor segment of Sanborn Lane has a no salt area. So far, we have wells and septic. And the Department of Public Work knows that. They never salt the area. Okay. Nobody salts the area. The private homes do not salt their driveway. That's cool. Therefore, it will not be permitted for anyone to use salt. On their property, period. Okay. Because it will it will filter down, as we all know, and will increase. Uh, that's the no salt area. Okay. So the town doesn't even salt. So yeah. like, oh yeah. Okay. And the department the public have been very very good about it, and guess if you want to get the thing. Mm -hmm. Well, it's good to know. Okay. Yeah. Well, well we wouldn't salt the new driveway anyway. No. Yeah. Too clean. Thank you. That's good to know. Yeah. Thank you. Um, any further comments? Okay. I'll close the public comment portion of the meeting. Any further discussion from the board? No. Uh, you, you, you do plan on uh, using the uh, public uh, or the municipal sewer and uh, yeah. municipal yes. water yes. In, uh, located in front of the house. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's, okay. It's great that the sewer available then. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. I will entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to grant the petitioner Eric Kalinitis. Close, Kalinitis. Okay. A special <laughs> permit under section uh, 63, 6.3.8.1, and I believe it's B. Mm -hmm of the zoning bylaws in order to demolish an existing dwelling on a non-conforming lot and to construct a new single-family dwelling on the property located at 105 Sanborn Lane in Reading, Mass. In accordance with the proposed single-family dwelling drawing, I think that's the way it's referenced, prepared and certified by Stephen, and here's another last name, uh, Melissa. Lester. Melissa. Uh, 33 Buckingham Drive, Reading, Mass., which is dated April 25, 2011. Uh, should we make reference to these? Even I think so, because we're, we're going to, okay, I'm gonna yeah, need, I'm gonna just get a, a date off of them, yeah, them and a date. Yeah. And we'll also uh, make reference to these architectural drawings. Yep. And I'll we'll get that data. We'll add that, uh, we'll add that dimension no, elevation. This permit uh, is subject to the following conditions. The petitioner shall submit to the building inspector a certified plot plan for the proposed construction and foundation plans prior to the issuance of a foundation permit for the work. The petitioner's final construction plans for the new structure shall be submitted to the building inspector along with the as-built foundation plan prior to the issuance of a building permit. And as-built plans showing the completed construction shall be submitted to the building inspector immediately after the work is completed and prior to the issuance of an occupancy permit. Anything else I need to put in this thing? We need to discuss the shed at all. <coughs> shed? Coming down. <laughs> Moved. It's 
Huh? It, was, it would have to be moved if it's going to stay there, and Glenn would enforce that anyway. Okay. So. I can put a I can put a statement in there. Yeah. Uh, I. We'll remove the check. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Maybe we just make part of the motion that the. Uh, uh, well, the new plans. New plans don't even. New plans on that do not even show the shed. Do they go to the show the shed? Applicant notes existing shed will be demolished. Okay. Or stated that the existing yeah. shed will be removed. Is, is the screen room an issue or not? That's well, reflected in the architectural drawings, but it's not on the plot. Then we, then we should correct that. Uh, what's that? Oh, the porch? Screen porch? Not included? I'm not, no, I'm asking the board. It's not indicated it's on the plot plan. Yeah, right. Approving this plot plan. Yep. Right. Right. With this it's set of drawings. So it's been represented that it will not be built. Okay. At this time. Okay. So what you have listed here is the deck is going to be building. We will not be enclosed screen. Right. Okay. The deck as it here is going to be built. Yeah. It's just not going to be enclosed. Right. With screen. There's two set. I think it's two separate ones. The deck off the family room, the little porch in the back. The octagon shaped piece will not be being built. Yeah. I, I I don't. I mean, generally we we just when we when the board makes a decision on the plans submitted. Right. And if there's a variation on the plans when they go to construction, the board usually wants to mm -hmm. revisit or or. Revisit the application and modify it. If it's, so if it's a major modification, yes. Well, I think so. I think a plan with the screen house on it and a plan without it is a, a major modification. If you plan, if you approve a plan that doesn't have it, then it shouldn't it shouldn't be built, according to town council, unless they come in for. I'm just trying to bring. I mean, this is what we've been doing all along, and all of a sudden it's different tonight. Well. We, we put in the existing shed uh, to be demolished, yes. and that's in there. So there's nothing wrong with putting an additional sentence right. that the, um, the well, I think it I think it makes it clear, right? Right. right the octagonal screen house, which is shown on the um, on the both plans, will not be built at this time. Fine. I'm just trying to make my life a little bit easier yeah, in the future. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. Good. Yeah, we we run away and leave, and you keep just stuck. <laughs> so, Sai, do you want to add those two provisions to the motion? I yeah, the two include in the motion that we would uh, make a, uh, a sentence that would uh, say that the existing shed will be demolished, uh, and that the architectural uh, uh, drawings uh, which were presented to the board this evening uh, will be. Uh, will exclude or eliminate the screened-in porch. Mm. Okay. Is there a second for the motion? I'll okay. second it. Bob? Okay. All those in favor of the motion? 5-0-0. Okay. Need a second plan? I do. I unfortunately wrote on that. <laughs> 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 bad habit of writing on everything that I'm given. So I'll just have one moment. I'm going to print, um, stamp a copy of the plan, which I'll give to you. Okay. And the board has 14 days to write up the decision, and there's a 20, 20 day appeal period following <coughs> the decision. 14 days to for write up the 21 days before. 20 days, yes. We can file for a building permit once we receive the decision. Is that right, Glenn? You can file anytime you want. Okay. I can't issue it until until the uh, I get a proof of recording at the Registry of Deeds of the final decision. But you can file you can file anytime you want. Okay. <clears throat> Come get the uh, stamped copy of the plan. Mm -hmm. This will stay in the full size. 
that the board needs to. Yeah. 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 You have another copy, right? I do. I got okay. Yeah. And you're all Thank set. You. Thank you. Thank you. No, so I need yeah. to get folded yeah. up and put them in. I didn't think you had uh, those uh, nice round, uh, what do you call them? It's like sauna tubes that you have in your safe in there. <laughs> you say, what's that? No, do you? Yeah. I'll stamp those. Okay. In. Um, do you have the one that has the red and blue on it? Let me see. Because I think you don't. The second page, the application. Mm -hmm. No, you don't. So okay. put that in there because that's the original. All right. Thank you. Okay, so we will proceed to case 1111 is a petition of Wade Wilworth who seeks a special permit under section 6.3.2 and section 6.3.3.2 of the zoning bylaws in order to add a 24 foot by 35 foot two story addition with a two car garage under plus a third story addition of 4.7 feet by 15 feet as per plan submitted on the property located at 26 Green Street in Reading. Uh, if there's no objection, I'll dispense with the reading of the abutters list, except to say that the abutters were notified, as were the following. Board of Selectmen, Town Clerk, Police Department, Fire Department, Building Department, Assessor's Office, Engineering Division, CPDC, Conservation Commission, Health Department, members and associate members of the Zoning Board of Appeals, as well as the Planning Boards of Wakefield, Linfield, North Reading, Stoneham, Woburn, and Wilmington. Anyone who wishes to testify on this case, I'd ask you to please stand up at this time and be sworn in. And it is uh, the testimony you're about to give is the whole truth, and the answer is I do. I do. Thank you, and if you please identify yourself. Okay, and um, the floor is yours. Um, on the plot plan, you notice on the right hand side, there's a, uh, a small addition. That will be on the second and third floor. It's almost a little overhang of the existing house. And on the left hand side, the proposed garage with a uh, sunroom and a porch in between the garage and the existing house. Uh, the reason I need the variance is because there's a 20 foot setback, so we kept the the back of the house straight across. There's also a 15 foot sewer easement on the left hand side, which we did keep it at 15 one. Um, I think there was a garage back there at one time, but when they put that, there's a big drain pipe in there. I think that's when they took the garage up. Uh, by keeping the back of the house the way it is, it allows me three parking spots on the left hand side of the property from the garage. And so this is uh, this is a special permit application. Yes. Glenn, do you have any comments? Yeah, this is um, what we what we have. It's the property is zoned Business B. Okay. Okay. Um, it's a non-conforming two-family as it exists. So we have we have a non-conforming use. And we have a non-conforming structure mm -hmm. on that property. So our bylaws, section 632, we're supposed to clarify this area and make it a lot easier for everyone to understand, but but it but it really doesn't. So so we've got you've got the use that's taken place of a two-family, and we want to expand. He wants to expand. Um, I believe it's a two-car garage. Yes, sir. Two-car garage under with rooms over it. You should have to look at the elevation plans for the drawings. Business B. So I, so I advertise it with um, under six three two and six three three two to try to cover everything that might pertain to this property. 
Business B is typically hotels and hotels, correct? Um, it's basically our downtown area that allows most of the business use. Uh, I believe in the business B, residential users are not allowed. Right. But this is non-conforming. And I'm not sure if adding all this onto it increases that non-conformity. Mm -hmm. my, my only objective is to that it's an existing two-family house. We're not changing the occupancy. So it's it's part of the bylaws of the town, but we're not we're not changing it from a two family to a two family, it's an existing two family. Glenn would um, in terms of the use of the house on the property, um, we've talked about this before, but six three six uh, alteration of a non-conforming single and two-family residential structure which this is becoming on that particular property uh, would that be more appropriate it basically says the, says the same thing but it is titled um, non-conforming single and two-family residential structure because it's on a B1 property and B1 business does not allow residential um, well that, that's it is a non-conforming two-family, but if you look under 636, it references back to 635. Correct, which is you. 635 talks about alteration of a non-conforming one or two-family dwelling as of a right, meaning you don't need a special permit. But it also talks about not increasing the footprint and things. So I don't think that 636 apply. 636 goes shoots us back to 635, and 635 doesn't apply in this situation. Because we're all through. But the applicant because, is saying because 635 says you can do it as of a right, which means he wouldn't even be here. All right? And if I thought that, that he way try to convince me of that, but well, but he did for the residential portion of the structure that he's he's doing this. Would he be actually by right putting that addition on? If he came to you right now, forget about the garage, forget about the deck that's there between the two, between the two. If he's coming into you and say, "I want to," I put a want to put a third floor on my one or two family structure. I want to go basically up on the footprint. I'm not changing the footprint. Yeah, is that by right by you? It, I, it would be if it was in a single or two-family dwelling area. So that that's the question. Okay. It's a it's a business B zone. Business B zone. So, mm -hmm. so it's a, it's it's vague. That's why I tried to cover the whole six three two and six three three two section. The, the more you read it, the more confusing it gets. <laughs> We've talked about this how many times? Right. It, it is. It's no, it's, it's, it's confusing. Yeah. Because if you look at 6332 and read the words literally, it says the Board of Appeals may grant a special permit to reconstruct, extend, alter, or change a non conforming structure in accordance with the section only, big word, only, if it determines that such. Reconstruction, extension, alteration, and change does not increase the non-conforming right. nature of the structure or create a new non-conforming. That's if it does that. I read that paragraph to say we can't do this. Can't do it. Can't do it. That's it. Under that paragraph, right. I would agree with you, sir. So that's why you can't do it. Then what you would have to do is apply for a variance. Correct. That's, that's what you would have or, to do. Or, or well, I think that's what he's saying. I think he's you, you are acknowledging that you need a variance. Are you? That's in the garage. That? No, I'm not. I'm, oh. I'm here because the garage was denied by the building inspector. Well, the garage is a different story. I think we got, we got two different situations on this particular piece of property. Mm. That's the way I read it. Yeah, you have a you have a, a, a zoning issue. You're telling me that this two family is not conforming. Correct. I say it's existing and it should be grandfathered. But that's just me. Well, that's that's what we're looking into. The reality of it is that we have two things on this property. We have the non-conforming structure that is a residential. The garage does not exist garage, at present. There was a garage there at one time. It does not exist right now. 
does not exist. Correct. Correct? It, it left the premises some years ago. We don't know when, but it left the premises. Correct. Okay. So we're talking about putting up a new structure, a new garage. That's one issue. Second issue is we have a one and two, we got a two family residential non conforming structure on the property. We first have to address that, and then we're going to go back, at least in my mind, we're going to go back and address the garage. So we're going to address that person, that one to me first. And I'm saying that if you read it literally in the 6332, as Sai is mentioning, I'm not sure that we can do it, but if we look at the 635 aspect of it, if, it, if you had come in and it was a conforming um, one or two family structure, right, you would, as by right, be able to put it up. Yeah. But 636 says that if this were the situation, it was conforming, but in this case it's not conforming, then in Glenn's mind, if we can do that, that's what we're going to do. Or if the board has the right to give that special permit under, under 636. So that's the only reason I'm going to 636. Yeah. Because we talked about this when town council was, with planning commission, was talking about changing all the 63 articles, and we weren't in favor, but they were. So we have to work with it. So that's the only way I can see to work with it in a particular situation like this. One other thing, John, is that if you drive by that location, this construction is already underway. Yes, on the existing house. Well underway. So you must be doing that under. So I have a building permit. Under 635. I have a building permit because I didn't. And the reason Glenn issued, I believe, the building permit is because I didn't change the existing footprint of the structure. Like we the said, right we side. vertically up. Right. Okay. So yes, he when, read you it did, when you did that, you were in essence actuating the six. Point three five aspect of the because otherwise he wouldn't have been a, even able to start this until right. it came before the board. Right. Right. Correct. So you don't have a building permit. You can't stop. You would have got a cease and desist, and Glenn would have had to issue it. So again, I come back to the same point. We got the six three five. If it were a conforming issue, Glenn would have released you and said, "Here's your building permit. Go ahead." But now we have to correct that because it's non-conforming. This is a non-conforming use. On that particular lot. So we're just saying that Glenn, Glenn can do what he what he wants to do because he's exercising the 635, which is mentioned in the 636, 636, and we're going to give you that, or you're going to apply for that, and the board decides in the affirmative they're going to grant you that under 636, which, as Sai and all the rest of us have talked about in the past not being able to do technically under 633 or 632, mm. uh, 6.332, uh, as we discussed so many times, because it says okay. basically you should get a variance to do this. Well, it goes back to your er earlier comment, whereas none of the, uh, I as the owner of the property was never notified that this property address for the whole area was going to be changed from residential to business. There's a lot of single family homes. I mean. They can't even come in and get a building permit without going for a variance because it's not conforming? Well, technically you were notified uh, by the planning board because they had CPDC before they can do any of this and move forward. They have to do a um, I don't think review so, process in public, public hearing. forum uh, to take in any input that they have and to allow anybody to speak. They have to do that. I've gotten, I've gotten letters for the new project from the Atlantic. I've gotten letters for signs. I never got a letter from the town to change the use of, the, of my property or the street in that matter. So uh, you, you essentially there's a lot of homeowners on Green Street in that area that the, the, the area's been changed from what it was to business without anyone knowing about it. Well that's, a, that's another question that I think could impact this but I don't think we really want to address that. What is the impact of uh, if that's included in the new smart zoning, I don't know where that leaves all well, this. I'm, I'm not sure that the zone has changed in that area. This, this is an old home that was yes. here prior prior and to it zoning. it always was, B1. Right. right. So I don't, I'm, wait, wait, I don't wait, think, wait back. I don't think the zoning's ever changed. 
that I'm that I'm aware of. Well, the only overlay is the overlay for the smart zoning. Right. And I don't know where that impacts this, because <clears throat> I have I haven't even seen it. In there. I, have, but, I have a question, and I think maybe Glenn could at least uh, confirm it. In regards to setbacks now, in in, in uh, business B. Yep. No front setback is required, is it? No. No. No side yard setback is required. No, just a rear. Just that's a rear. Just a rear setback of 20 feet is required. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the way I read it too. My next question is. I see a deck on your plot plan at the rear of the house. That's the existing, yes. Pardon? That's the existing second means of egress right now. That's there now. Yes, sir. But yet you're, let's see, looking at your plans, I didn't see it. Check out page five. Five. Existing remains of the house, it just shows a bulkhead back there. And that's why I was confused. Is that deck there or isn't it? It and is there. And if it is there, was a building permit and a permit issued for that? Because that's that's six and a half feet from the rear property line. Was there on the bottom? The existing the existing house. Yeah. Is on page six. Okay. So if you look at page six, you'll see the basement floor, which is a few steps from the second floor, is the actual deck and stairway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we don't, we don't. That's what I say. All I saw was the existing remains, the sheet one here, and it shows a bulk there. It shows no deck. Granted, when I, I went down and looked at the property, I you know stopped in front and looked. I didn't go around back or anything. No, but if you but you look at sheet one, you see see the post just beyond the bulkhead. Yeah. Yep. Those are the posts for the deck above. Yeah, yeah. So it's for another. So it's right. like a second story deck? Second floor of egress. Ah, okay. Right, it's a deck above those oh. posts. Okay, okay, that explains it. Very good. And that has been there a while. Look I at guess sheet, the question look was, at was sheet a three. Bill for that. If you look at sheet three yeah. on the drawings, you'll see the deck. Ah, okay. On the, yeah, no. Okay. That explains it. Yeah, I, I did the same thing as you did. I looked, back and looked, at the, uh, uh, looked, looked in the assessor's yeah. card for where a deck was put on or yeah. a, a staircase and a second deck for a second means of egress. I couldn't find I, it. Yeah, that was a question. So I, I said the same thing to myself. Is this, is, was this put on legally and where was it put on? I didn't have for about 18 years. Yeah, but the the uh, assessor's assessor's uh, cards go back to 1966, is it? Mm -hmm. And it's not listed any place. So yeah. all of that stuff usually listed on the on the card when it's converted over. And technically, um, it really didn't show when the. Um, 67 it went back to and it really didn't show um, where the house was converted from a single family to a two family unless it was done at the time that the house was built back in the turn of the century I assume I, I didn't find a date on it mm. Year built, it says. I'm looking at the assessor's thing here. I pulled it off the line 1920. 1920, okay. It says, yeah. But it, I don't know, did it say single family or two families? Uh, I don't see any note here, John. Maybe you can read these faster than I can. <coughs> Well, uh, use code was 104. I don't know what 104 is. If that was a single or a two family. Hmm? 104 is a one family or a two family. Say that again? 104. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. It was the assessor's um, code. Code. So we'd have to go back and check that. But I mean, it's 
It's yeah. there. I think 104 is a single family, but I'm not positive. I don't know. Couldn't tell you. Either way, I had the same concern that you did. Yeah. And when I went back and I looked at it, that's why I refer to looking at that as two different aspects on the same lot. And I said, you know, it, it certainly appears that we're going to need a variance for the garage because it's only 15, 15, 15 and feet, half feet from the rear. Yeah. And that's on the. In that arrow, I can never chase that arrow. Um, on the <laughs> left side of the drawing, <laughs> on the right side where the garage meets up with the, with the back of the thing, I think it's less than 15.5. But I know right. why that's right. done. That's done so that they can connect. Right. But, but right now. I would agree. It looks like it on plan it would be. Right. But it looks like now if we follow what we have for a B1 property, it has to be 20 feet from the rear lot line because that's the only dimensional control that a B1 yes. uh, zoning area would have. <coughs> so I don't know how we can move forward on a special permit to, to give that. Whether the deck was there or not, um, I'm not. I'm not convinced of that aspect of it. Not that I don't think that this would be a legitimate proposal. I just don't see how we can get around the variance aspect of it. Uh, well, and, and this maybe Glenn can. This is again because this is in a business B with a residential use. There's another provision that. A single or two family dwelling by special permit you can maintain that existing existing um, non-conforming setback line but that's usually we address that in a s single in a residential district right so, so I don't in, but this is a this is this lot is zoned b1 has always been zoned b1 so um, this is not a residential lot that we're talking about and most of the special permit was all utilized for residential lots it's only a few cases where the use aspect of it um, gets into it mm -hmm. so what, what is the special permit Do you have a special permit now no, for the I, construction you're doing i was able to get a um, regular permit Building permit. Building permit. Building permit. Because uh, we weren't permit. we weren't increasing the footprint, right, of of the non-conforming structure, of which was a single or two-family right. dwelling. Right. But but also now there's there's another provision that allows you to take a single or two-family dwelling and extend it along that same line. Um, where is that? That's what I'm trying to find out. You were originally, I think, looking for six three, three two again. Uh, six three two. No, that's non-conforming uses. Non we're talking. We're use. talking about okay. non-conforming structure. Because that allows for an extension. But this is for the non conforming structure. This would be for the house alone. Mm -hmm. This would not be for the garage. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's to see what that section is changing the use. I think is it six three six in the event? <clears throat> well, the six three six I'm looking at as part of. Um, allow such extension, <sighs> which determines that the proposed extension alteration change will not be substantially. That's six three six. I think. Six three six three six would allow you to. That talks about right alteration now, of a non-conforming single or two-family residential structure. That's that's what we have. It's a residential yeah. structure, but it's in a business zone zone, zone district. Use. 
But we're not changing the use at all. That's no. It's staying the same. So no, I, but, I don't see that. But we're so are we? What? Are we expanding the? I don't think we're expanding the use. The use is the same. It's a two-family to two-family. We're expanding the size of the structure. You're expanding the structure. So I think this, where you can determine if it's any more no, detrimental you're not, to the neighborhood. You're not, you're not expanding the use. No, no. You're expanding I the structure. Yeah. So but I think the board hat can do that by special permit under six three six. What? It, I, I'm looking at this now, and it looks like the to me the only issue is the rear setback and to me there's no new non-conformity the existing building including the deck assuming the deck is considered part of the building now is six and a half feet from the rear property line and the proposed addition is 15 and a half feet now even if the deck wasn't there they've just extended the rear of that to the the the, the dwelling and it's 15 and a half feet still, and as John says, it looks to me like at the corner it, where it met the house, that might even be 15.4 or 15.3 or something. Uh, that, that, to me, they haven't increased that non-conformity at the rear. Yeah. But, uh, but what, I, what I'm trying to wrap my yeah. mind around was, what is the primary zone here? The primary zone is B1. Business. Business, business. B. Business, business B. B. So <coughs> if we're building a structure in a business, as B1 zone. We yeah. need to comply with the requirements of the B1 zone. And the B1 zone says you must be 15, you must be 20 feet from the rear lot line. The non the non-conforming structure, it, it, which is the one and two, in this case the two-family structure, so that's secondary to the primary zone. And it has been for even when you bought okay. the property 18 years ago, that's it was a B1 zone. So by not making that more non-conforming, that doesn't apply here because of the business. District? It would apply any district right. to, to me. It would be if something is non conforming and you add an addition to it or expand on it or something, it's still in that same district, whether it be residential, uh, S15, S20, Business B, it's still the same thing you're doing. Uh, you're expanding upon it, and that's what we're doing here. It's just the use you're not changing. It's a non-conforming use we all agree on. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm I'm looking. It's. So questions it, are you expanding? I'm, I'm just wondering here. If six three three two may apply, which is non-conforming structure. And the board of appeals may grant a special permit to reconstruct, extend, alter, or change a non-conforming structure in accordance with this section, if it determines that such restoration, extension, etc., does not increase the non-conforming nature of the structure. Or create a new non-conformity, and is substantially uh, is not substantially more detrimental than the existing non-conforming structure to the neighborhood. Period. It's, it's basically it's, it's similar to what's required for six three eight one B. But that's that's specifically that's for non-conforming structures. The Part the difficulty that I'm having. Six three is the three section two. I think that it says is. or create a new nonconformity. Well, what's the new nonconformity? The twenty foot setback from the B one zone of the garage area. But it already doesn't meet the twenty foot setback. It's it a new structure. It doesn't. Does not ex The new structure that's being proposed here does not exist right now. The house it's, is it's what a, exists. It's, it's an the extension. Only well, see, I, I, can't, I can't get myself around the extension because you're, you're, ex you're extending the line of the house into the B1, which is the primary zone. The primary, one's primary zone was the B1. Yeah. Why, why would that make any difference if it's a B1 or if it were an S20 or a S15? If, if that they, setback was... Because the, prim the, primary, the primary zone here is for B1. It's not for a residential property. It wasn't for a one or two family residential okay. house. Okay, oh. but he's grandfathered. Well, we all recognize the fact that he's, okay. it's legal non-conforming okay. use. I'll, I'll go along with it. I'll it's go a legal non-conforming use. I I'll think. go along with it. Yeah. 
I, I agree. I wrestle with this a little bit, whether a variance is required, et cetera. But the more I read into it, and if it's accepted, he's not increasing the nonconformity non there. I was more concerned. I don't like that uh, on the, uh, you might say, on the easterly side, going from 2.8 existing setback to a 2.4. But in a business B, it's you no can have zero. And so he's... <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I don't like it, but it's legal. Si, did you have a question? Oh, the only comment, I mean, the reason you pushed it back was to get yourself a third parking area, right? A third parking and then keep the line straight. Right. But, I mean, if you, went, if you went to two parking spaces, you, you could easily comply with the 20 feet. Yes. I could, I could pull it forward, but, I mean, a third spot off street parking is... God, I mean... You can't, I, you can't park on Green Street without a sticker. Mm -hmm. I have a guest at my house mm -hmm. uh, during the day, they get a parking ticket. Do you happen to know what the distance is on that, looking at this, the right hand? It's 15.5 over on the left hand side. Yeah. But from the 2.4 to the back, do you know what the distance is? I would say just by the way that building goes at a little bit of an angle, I would say it might be 15 feet. I'd say 14 and a half to 15 feet plus or minus. Yeah, I mean, it looks just by shorter. The, just by the angle of the building. Right. I, I, so it looks like it's a bit skewed. It looks, like it's a, skewed. Skewed. it, it right. looks like it's a bit skewed. It's not parallel with that rear building line. Yes, sir. Um, John, additional? Questions, no, 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 I know. Bob, I, I, I don't. I think we've discussed it. And as I said, I, other than that, that was a concern was the the side yard, yeah, but can't do anything about that. And I don't think personally he's creating a new nonconformity okay. uh, on that. So I, I, okay, I can look at both of them too. Yeah. <laughs> Two different sets of eyes. Okay, I can yeah. understand where, where John's. Coming I think he, I, from. to okay. me, he meets the requirements of six three three two. For a special permit, you view, I think you view the garage as a new I do. structure. That's what it was advertised as. I do. To an existing structure. It's I a do. brand new thing. Structure. I do. Okay? And therefore, it, it's not compliant. But I, I can also rationalize <laughs> the way Bob's going at it and saying, okay, I mean, I, I don't think it does any harm to do it, to, to accept it that way. I know. I don't know how the building inspect. If something's connected to an existing structure, is that considered an addition? But if it were separated by two feet, that would be a new structure then, would it not? Stand See, I'm looking garage. at this as an extension. This I is. Mean, this is an addition. It's an addition, right. That's the way right. I'm looking at it. You can, you know, in, most, in most districts, you can't have two buildings on one lot. Right. Unless it was an accessory building. There you go. So, so a garage by itself. So they have to be connected or wouldn't be allowed. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. It's an addition. John, any more questions, comments? No. So, so the question, John, you're raising that you're, you're saying that it should be 20 foot setback for this new mm -hmm. building. Mm -hmm. And Bob, is, I mean, I, I, I look at it as, as an extension myself, and if it's not making it any more non-conforming, I don't know I, if there's a I difference would, between I would business and the ba business. Basically, that I mean that's that's. That's the way I would feel too, except yeah. that I think 6322 allows you to do a special permit because the non-conformity is not being increased. My only question is, I was having a little problem with the B, business B versus mm -hmm. a residential right. district. I mean, we, you know, Wade and I, we, we went over this for several days trying to figure out how to attack it. Mm -hmm. Well, let's open this to uh, public comment at this time. And if anybody wish to comment on this? Okay. So we will close the public comment period. <laughs> um, and uh, any further discussion from the board? Anyone like to venture a motion? <laughs> <laughs> well, I would seem to be the most adamant here about uh, <laughs> stating my position, so it looks like it's up to me to make the motion. Uh, uh, 
I'll make a motion, let's see here, that uh, the Board of Appeals uh, grant a uh, special permit to the applicant Wade Wilworth under section 6.3.3.2 of the zoning bylaws in order to add a 24 foot by 35.5 foot uh, two-story addition with two car garage under plus a third story addition uh, 4.7 feet by 15 feet as shown on the plot plan uh, prepared for the property 26 Green Street uh, prepared by Edward J. Farrell uh, 110 Professional Landscape at 110 Wind Street, Ruben Mass, uh, and dated uh, 5 4 11, May 4th, 2011. And in general conformance with the architectural plans submitted with the application the uh, the two additions uh, so noted uh, those uh, let's see uh, prepared by Phoenix collaborative architects and dated uh, May 4th 2011 consisting of five sheets Second. one numbered one through five uh, with the Conditions that the uh, applicant uh, submit to the building inspector foundation plans of the uh, proposed additions uh, prior to the issuance of a uh, foundation permit, and that uh, number two, that the applicant submits building plans to the building inspector along with an as built foundation plan uh, prior to the issuance of a uh, building permit. And number three, that the applicant submit to the building inspe inspector as built finished drawings of the uh, or as built uh, completed draw uh, drawings of the uh, proposed additions uh, prior to the issuance of, of an occupancy permit. Uh, One question, sir. Yes. Uh, there's the proposed addition on the left and then. Uh, I call it an overhang, but an addition on the right was the second and third floor. Yes. I don't. I thought I just heard just third floor. I just wanted to clarify. You, you think? Thinks you just said second, third. It's for second and third floor. That addition. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll, I may have just said one. I'll, story. I'll amend it. Yeah. It, well, it's uh, okay. <coughs> yeah, okay. Under and third story addition. The second. Okay. Floor. So, yeah, the uh, I'll amend that by saying the four foot seven by five fifteen yes, foot sir. addition yes, uh, is uh, for proposed for the second and third story yes, addition. Sir. Yeah. I got one. Did you you made a reference to a page six? Did you did you want to submit a page six with these drawings? We only have five. Um, six was an existing plan, but I I've had so many plans I don't know. Okay. I think we got the plot plan and we got the. Okay. Would you be amenable to uh, amend your original motion uh, to include um, that the second floor of the proposed garage area would, would never be converted to residential use? The proposed second floor of the what? Garage. The garage area. Which is on the plans. But how many times have we seen this happen that it becomes Two. Now we have a three. Now we have three residents on the property mm -hmm. instead of two. Right. Yeah. So I'm thinking that's being a special permit. We could easily. Yeah, I uh, I have no problems. I don't know what the applicant is. Storage on the plant. Storage. Storage on the plant. Oh, it does. Yep. Okay. There's storage. Maybe a family room, but that's all okay. Right. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll amend it that uh, yeah that. Right now, the, the board sees it as noted as storage, and there shall be no additional residential use of that second floor area above the garage, proposed garage. Okay. Yep. 
Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor? Opposed? 410. And the applicant does know that that means it's approved. Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> Give me one moment, I will stamp uh, plans for you. Would be so good to write up the uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you for your patience. We're now ready for case 1112, which is the petition of Ryan Kiley, who seeks a special permit under section 6.3.3 and 6.3.3.2 of the zoning bylaws in order to demolish an attached non-conforming garage and to construct a larger addition that is also non-conforming with a proposed side yard setback of 7.4 feet on the property located at 326 Lowell Street in Reading. If there's no objection, I will dispense with the reading of the butters list, except to say that butters were notified, as were the following. Board of Selectmen, Town Clerk, Police Department, Fire Department, Building Department, Assessor's Office, Engineering Division, CPDC, Conservation Commission, Health Department, Members and Associate Members of the Board of Appeals, as well as the Planning Departments of Wakefield, Lanefield, North Reading, Stoneham, Woburn, and Wilmington. Anyone who wishes to testify on this matter, please stand up and we will swear you in. And it is uh, the testimony you're about to give you swear will be the whole truth. The answer is I do. I, I do. do. Thank you. And um, if you please identify yourself and the floor is yours. For the record, uh, Sean Rea, law firm of uh, Mon and Mon, 275 Mission 1 Road in Woburn. Uh, here, with, here before you on behalf of the petitioner, Ryan Kiley, who is here with me tonight, uh, owner of the property at uh, 326 Lowell Street in Reading. I also have with me the site contractor, Glenn Metrano of Metrano Construction. Uh, the property is located uh, single family, 15 zoning district, and also the uh, aquifer protection district. Uh, it's currently a single family residence. Uh, it's a non-conforming structure in the uh, S15 zoning district with respect to the side yard setback. Uh, existing structure 7.4 feet from the uh, side lot line, obviously requires 15. Uh, the special permit uh, is sought pursuant to 6.3.3.2 of the Reading Zoning by as an alteration of a non-conforming, of an existing non-conforming structure. Uh, Ryan is seeking to construct an addition to his house, uh, 
is currently a one car garage uh, which would be uh, converted to a first floor master bedroom and bath with a full basement uh, below and a uh, second floor uh, space as well. Uh, the addition would maintain the current nonconformity as to the side setback of 7.4 feet. Uh, it does not create a new nonconformity. Uh, it's not an extension of the nonconformity. The, the existing 7 foot setback will be maintained throughout uh, the, the, the whole addition. Uh, just a quick note on the aquifer protection district. Uh, the current impervious surface on the property is 11.3%. Uh, addition would increase that impervious surface to approximately 13.2%, which is still below the 15% uh, required by the bylaw. Uh, so the petitioner respectfully requests that the board issue the special permit uh, allowing the construction of the addition. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Also, have the site contractor here to answer any questions you might have as well. Okay, thank you. Well, Glenn, do you have any comments? No, nope, just um, we just went through it. This is a s typical uh, 6322 two, six, three, three, uh, permit. The existing uh, structure is non conforming at 7.4 on the left hand side, and the proposed construction will be 7.4 on the same left hand side. Sai, questions, comments? No, I have no problem with this one. John. Um, <coughs> the advertisement shows the garage to construct a larger addition that is non-conforming. Are we talking about extending what would have been the garage back further? The addition does extend back further than the current structure. But That's it's not referenced here on the um, certified plot plan. It is. I believe it is. I think you have yeah, an existing plot plan and you also have plan. one post. Yeah. <laughs> so it does I go. I thought I looked at it first <laughs> twice. <laughs> and I said, Where is the other one? It does extend about 10 feet further back to the rear of the property, which, as you can see, there's ample room. Right. right. Okay. So, of course, not yet. Uh, no, uh, this looks pretty straightforward, uh, non-conforming lot, uh, they're not increasing any non-conformity, and certainly I think the addition will fit with the house and with the neighborhood, uh, and uh, I don't see any increase uh, in, in impervious to the uh, lot, uh, or excuse me, there is an increase in impervious, but I don't see it exceeding well, we'll the maximum allowed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm fine with it. John, questions, comments? Uh, the same as, as the other members. Um, seems pretty straightforward. Yeah. Okay. Are there any members of the public who, or anyone else here who wishes to comment on this? Seeing none, I will open and then close the public comment period. Um, any further discussion from the board? No. I agree this appears pretty straightforward to me. Um, I'll entertain a motion. John, you want to write one or you want me to write one? I'll write it. Mm. Okay. Um, make a motion to grant to the petition. Petitioner Ryan Kiley, special permit under section 6.3.3.2 of the zoning bylaws in order to demolish an attached non-conforming garage and to construct a larger addition that is also non-conforming with the proposed side yard setback of 7.4. On the property located at 326 Lowell Street, Reading, Mass, as shown on the certified plot plan prepared by... You want the one with the... the, with the it shows it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sullivan Engineering Group, 22 Mount Vernon Road. Uh, Boxford, Mass, 01921, dated 11510. Mm -hmm. uh, plot plan shows is that 26 feet, the addition on the side. Twenty-six feet by eighteen point eight proposed addition. Uh, 
with no additional non conforming requirements. Special permit is conditioned upon the following. Petitioner shall submit to the building inspector a certified plot plan for the proposed construction and proposed foundation plans <coughs> prior to the issuance of a foundation permit for the work. Two, the petitioner's final construction plans for the new structure shall be submitted to the building inspector with the as-built foundation plan prior to the issuance of a building permit and as-built plan showing the completed construction shall be submitted to the building inspector immediately after the work is completed and prior to the issuance of an occupancy permit. Do you want to reference the um, all the floor oh yeah, yeah. plans? Also submitted by the petitioner. Uh, four architectural designs showing the addition prepared by Diane Myers, Architectural Services, 159 Wakefield Street, Reading, Mass. I do not see a date. Mm. Maybe. I agree. No date I reference no on date. the architectural uh, Just as January 2011. Oh, oh wait, down, okay. Wait on it, January 2011. Uh, yeah. January 2011. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Oops. Oops. Could I suggest that uh, maybe we put in that this will be a three-story addition, a basement, a full basement, plus two-story on top? Because we didn't refer to that, and it's in the plan, but it, it's not uh, it's in the, the diagram. I mean, it's in the plans, architectural plans, but it's not in the motion. In the, uh, instead of the construction, instead of a larger foot, Three-story addition? Well, two-story on a full basement. Okay. Construct a two-story and full basement addition. Mm -hmm. 26 by 18, as you had mentioned. Yep. And I'll second the uh, amendment. The amendment. Okay. okay. All those in favor? Five zero zero. That is approved. In one moment, I'll stamp some plans for you to take with you. Please make sure I think I have another set. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Check that. We've just been stamping the first page of the architectural renderings. Um. stapled together anyway, right? Just so they're in the file, yeah. And they're stamped, yeah. Okay. So before the board has 14 days to write the decision and 20 day appeal period follows thereafter. Thank you very much. You're all set. Thank you. Thank you. And John, you're gonna write this one up? For us. No more readers. More readers? Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you, Maureen. Okay. So next item on our agenda is the board reorganization. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> okay. You're off. Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Vacation? Yes. Nice. <laughs> so we have lost our uh, former trusted leader. Tuesday. Tuesday. So he's going to be at this like Miss Big Yeah. Decides to come. Yeah, he's been invited. Yeah. Very nice. 
It's about five years. What's the time frame on that? Um, uh, anything beyond five years and beyond. No, no, no. no the time of the meeting. Time oh. of the meeting. Oh. Is it about the oh, agenda right yet? At seven. Of when would they? Is he on the agenda? Uh, it would be on the agenda. Oh, okay. You can get it online. You can get everything okay. online. Of course. Outstanding. <laughs> what is the CVV meeting? That 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 um, email you just sent out. I just got the first, part, the second part of the CVV. Bring your car if you don't want it anymore. Yeah, I, I didn't something? even see that. The, what, I was asked what the car oh, thing oh, was. Oh, the YCC. The I'm sorry, the YCC. Connection. Oh, the correction. Vehicle. I had somebody actually send me an email. Vehicle J is. It's in the library parking lot, and they bring in fire engines and the police wagon and the cars and the big DPW trucks and all the kids and the grown-up kids come and they can Truck climb day. in them and look at them and ask questions. It's, it's kids love it. The kids love it too. The kids love it too. And you have the time now. Will the um, the two Zambonis be there? I don't think they're going to be Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I took pictures of them a few times. You took pictures? <laughs> so, back to reorganization. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there anyone who would like the chair or? Well, we usually the, the, um, the vice chair usually steps up to the chair. So the first question would be, what is the feeling of the vice chair at this point stepping up to the chair? I am happy to do so. Um, I will say, however, if somebody would like to be the chair, so I'm not particularly <laughs> looking in your direction, but um, I'd, I'd also be happy to um, step back if somebody is, is anxious to be the chair. Really wants I, it. No, I'm, no I'm, I'm happy I'm yeah. happy to do it. But yeah. I also don't want to um, I think so I would make a great chair. Yes. <laughs> so you which? would you would be say that again? You stay as a vice chair and Sai would be the chair. Well Sai's not a full member yet though. I'm not mm. a full member. How come? Do it. <laughs> <laughs> How come? <laughs> That's right. You can be a full member next week. Well, well if, there, if the selectman is meeting that. in that direction this coming Tuesday, but I would have to be voted a full member first. Oh, I just no. I just with Clark Leo, and I just assumed that yeah. you would have. Hey, I think he missed the vote on this. Moved up. Would have assumed what? I mean, that you move, that you it, but he put in for clocks as you'd be the next in line. Well, I thought I, I, I like your side. The vice chair usually steps up and becomes a chair. Hmm. Well, it has been that's that that's traditionally what it's been. Yeah. yeah. Are you worried about work at all? Because sometimes you don't know that you can meet him. You know, I I actually happen. have um, as of two weeks ago a new job, which will be much more regular hours. Ooh. So no, he's used to so that. that that should work out in that in that regard. And obviously, if you can't, the vice chair steps up, and exactly. if the vice chair can't do it, somebody somebody steps else will step up. Somebody will. Like like I said, I'm I'm happy to do it. I didn't know if anybody was anxious to do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, Can we all unanimously agree that we would like to have Jeff? Sir, do we have to have a motion? Motion. I think we do. I think okay. we have to have a, a motion second. made, nomination, a motion. Yeah. I think the motion to nominate. Yeah. To be the uh, chairman of the zoning board for the coming year. Do we I have would a second? second that. Okay. Second. All those in favor? favor. All in comment? All those in favor? Vote for yourself. Oh, stay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're you're right. you're raising your hand means you're you're accepting you it accept. too. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll accept That's it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Very good. Jeff accepts. So we need a vice chair. Do we need to? vote a uh, vice chair at the same time then? I think we do, yeah, yeah because so. if something should happen to the chair right. at next meeting, we need to have a vice chair to be so, yeah. present. Yeah. Like Jeffrey's stepping in tonight. Yeah. I'm supposed to contact the town manager to convert to the Yes, when you, when you re-upped your yeah. membership at that time, you could have requested to become 
Yeah, yeah I just didn't think I had to do that. Number, that's all. You know? Okay. Clock should have told you. Mm -hmm. We'll blame clock. <laughs> I think it's. <laughs> oh, I mean, clock, clock should have told you. two letters. Clock's home in his living room one watching this. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Yeah, probably I should have signed something when you go in, but that's. You can see Paula. Paula, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. she'll swear you went. Um, so in the meantime, we have to have a vice chair and that uh, we leave. Three. Probably would have to be one of us three. Because Kristen yeah, is a, an associate member yeah, as well. One of three members here tonight, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I have a I have a tough I know it's not so on TV, I can't say, but I, I don't know if I can make that commitment. Okay. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. I have played narrows. the role of vice chair and chair a number of times. Robert has been chair. Have you been a vice chair too? Yes. Okay. I was vice chair before I was chair for That's two okay. years. Yeah. So would you like the uh, vice chair? I, I would. I would be glad to take vice okay. chair. Yeah. I'll, I'll nominate Robert Redfern as vice chair. I'll second that motion also. All those in favor? I accept. Okay. Very good. Okay. And then <coughs> Cy, are we amending a um, requirement that or a condition that Cy File the necessary paperwork <laughs> to become a full member. <laughs> and I think, I think, Maureen, that um, the board uh, could uh, go on record in the minutes that the board is recommending that Cy be moved to a position of full yes. member. So, put that in um, minutes. That's what I'm thinking. Yep. Um, and so, it more or less, is to support. Board um, supports. You are. Supports is. Uh, Couldn't they just do that at next Tuesday's meeting? Well, that would, be, that would be the intent. If, yeah. if Cy can get in there, like, tomorrow, we'll, we'll not open tomorrow. Monday? Monday, but I don't think it happens that quickly. Yeah. Um, Monday, yeah. Well, we don't even know if they're going to meet next Tuesday on appointments, do we? Well, they, they might be meeting, but see, now there's a this board that does the... Overview. Yeah. It, it's there's a, the <laughs> committee that does... Right, the, exactly. The I forgot about that. The possible yes, meetings. yeah. Then even more reason why it should get into the minutes that the board is standing behind the request that Cy be moved to a position of full member. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Sure. Everyone's comfortable with that? I'm, I'm definitely on board sure. with that. Yes. Yep. I can't see why they couldn't just do it. But well, the other four members, because Cy can't vote, but the other four members would mm -hmm. recommend that. Yeah, uh, that way certainly it makes it a lot easier when uh, somebody applies right. soon, that hopefully they, soon. That soon. they come that, in as the associate. Yeah, right. that they would come in as an associate. Well, I remember when I, when I moved over, Susan Miller had left, mm -hmm. and I just assumed that Peter at that time was going to move up. But I talked to Marvin, and he had no interest. So I, right. that's what I put my name in. And after that, Peter, if you're going to be here, speech that Peter, Jeffrey yeah. gave, we probably will have people clamoring to. Oh, that. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> it was delivered flawlessly. Um, okay. Should we move on to the minutes? The minutes? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to take a moment to look at the minutes of May 19th, which uh, three out of the five of us were not present Let's for. So. Once again, I'd like to request that. Minutes when they come to me have all the corrections just in one email to me instead of separate emails. You know, like like Clark, I would get the final draft from Clark, which would have all the corrections in it. And if that can be done, that that works well for me. Okay. As opposed to many different ones. So Clark must have taken all our comments and put them into one document. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. They they were all yes. I didn't know that. That works I guess really I, I will well. take that on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> it just makes it easier and it makes sure that they're all in there. And I'm mm -hmm. sure it does, yeah. but uh, you know, it takes some time then on the on the chairman's part to do that. A, a, yeah. a tiny bit. Pardon? A tiny bit of time.
comments that I had have been incorporated into the final draft of uh, May 19th, so I have no further additions to the May 19th uh, final draft. Sai? Fine with me, both. Okay. Uh, do we have, now neither myself nor John nor John oh. were present for that meeting, so, so uh, two can <laughs> really just the two so of we're you. So just going to have two voting. Huh? Well, I'll make a motion then, Sai, that uh, we approve the minutes of uh, the final draft of the minutes of May 19, 2011 as uh, written. I guess I have second. seconded it. Okay. Yeah. All those in favor? Zero, zero. Good thing you voted the <laughs> third. <laughs> zero, zero, three, three, I guess, yeah. I, Okay, if everyone will take one moment to look at the minutes of June 2nd. Okay, no problems. Looks like I had one comment there that's been taken care of. I'm fine with it. Comments, corrections? No further. I'm, I'm comfortable with the final draft. Mm -hmm. All right. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion. To approve Seven. the minutes of June 2nd. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, and it will be Cy, myself, Rob, Bob, and uh, John sure. Miles voting. All those in favor? Opposed? Four zero one. And I don't believe that we have any other business. That covers it for tonight. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is there a uh, motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. A second. Second. All those in favor? Five zero zero. Okay. Very good, John. <laughs>